Hey there guys, if you follow my channel you know that I'm a passionate ice angler and I spend a lot of time out on the ice here in the Pacific Northwest. And we get varying ice conditions here from really hard slick ice in the cool and cold dry years versus in really wet years we will get lots of slush and really challenging deep snow conditions. And one of the things I struggle with is keeping my feet warm. So today I thought I'd talk about some of my experiences with a couple of the different uh, boots I use when ice fishing. Now for several years I used the Muck Arctic Ice Boot here. This is a specialized uh, grip boot which is a neoprene insulated boot. It's a slip-on style boot. They retail for right around $225, $230. And uh, I've been using this boot for several years, but this past year it finally started to fail on me. And I'll talk about that failure point. And I replaced it with the Corker's Polar Vortex boot. And I want to talk about why I went this direction versus going uh, in the same direction I had before with these uh, muck style boots. And I'll talk about why I made that change and some of my experiences with the Polar Vortex boot versus the muck boot. So let's start with the muck boot. Like I said, this is a neoprene style boot. It's a tall boot, so it measures 13 inches on this size nine. Its insulation is primarily uh, neoprene, which is five millimeters in thickness, but it also has a very soft uh, fleece lining, which makes it a little bit easier to put the boot on and take it off, but also adds some warmth to it. It then has this exterior rubberized coating uh, to make it a little more durable, a little bit more waterproof, and then reinforces around the toe and heel section here. They do make a mid version, but uh, I went with the tall to give me some slush protection and added insulation up on my legs. Let's contrast this with the Corker's Polar Vortex boot. This is uh, a leather exterior boot with a added rubberized toe here and then some reinforcements um, around the toe and on the heel as well. So this is a leather boot, like I said, which is waterproof and then it has a breathable waterproof membrane. And for insulation, it uses a, a material called Thinsulate, which you'll see in a lot of ice fishing jackets and bibs and coats, uh, which is a very easy to work with. Uh, material that insulates um, even if it gets damp although that doesn't seem to be an issue with this one because my feet have been um, pretty darn dry in this boot on rare exceptions which I'll talk about. These Corker's Polar Vortex actually come in two different insulation weights. This one has 600 grams of Sensolate and it's rated to negative 40 degrees and they also make a 1200 gram um, insulated version uh, which is rated to negative 60. This is about $225, $230. I think it's about $240. So 10 bucks more for twice the insulation rate. I went with the 600 because I, I don't deal with negative 60 degree temps and um, although my feet do on occasion get cold, uh, I've never got to the point where I felt like uh, I needed an extreme amount of protection. It just doesn't get that cold here. But as you can tell, this is a slightly shorter boot, so it doesn't quite have as much insulation up the leg. And it doesn't have quite the same amount of slush protection. So we get really deep slush here. We'll get a lot of water on top of our ice mixed with snow. Um, in general, my bibs have done a pretty good job because my bibs cinch down around the top of the boots and button up. Uh, keeping snow out of here, but in extreme slushy conditions, I have had some sort of capillary action that's worked water up and I've gotten a little damp right here around the top, but not so much that I'm getting a bunch of water gushing in. We generally won't get slush that's that deep, but it is a concern and um, I've noticed that I just don't get the same protection in the deep slushy conditions. Um, if I wasn't wearing bibs, I would definitely be getting uh, a significant amount of snow um, inside of these boots uh, if I didn't have that external protection. So that's one of the benefits of the muck style boots is they really do offer much better protection just simply because of the height of the boot. 
uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, traction on these boots. So the challenge here is that early season will often have very slick ice conditions and then once we start getting snow that'll transition to slush conditions but that varies by year and it will vary by uh, wherever you ice fish you might face in the midwest there's a lot more slick ice conditions um, whereas in some areas you might have more wet ice conditions the muck boot uses a material from Vibram called their Vibram Arctic Grip, which is sort of this blue uh, rough material here you see on the bottom of the boot. It's designed to give you a little bit better grip on wet, icy, slick conditions, but it won't scuff or mess up your wood floors or your tile floors uh, in the house. Uh, so it's designed to minimize damage to um, other environments that you might be walking in but still give you grip does it improve your ice grip a little bit um, but it still isn't great you still slide and slip a little bit like even when i'm drilling a hole with the ice auger i had problems with uh, a little bit of slippage on this uh, so it's good it's better than not having something but it's not like this amazing material that solves all your problems in terms of grip on ice. Whereas when you buy the Polar Vortex, it actually comes with their snow grip, which is a rubber studded grip. And uh, this is a grip that's designed again to be sort of multi-use. You can walk in snow, get some improved traction on ice. It has these bars across it uh, to give you some snow traction. And then it's got these rubberized uh, studs on there um, that won't damage your floors, your wood floors, and things like that. But honestly, uh, one of the reasons I went with the corkers is that I knew that I could change out the sole very quickly and easily. Um, so you can simply just pull this tab off the back here, and then you can remove the soles and change them out pretty quickly. So I can do that real quick. It is a challenge, but they don't want to make it so your sole will come off. Then you can just rip this thing off and you can put it back on. Um, oftentimes when I take them out, you have to try to push them in back by hand on these little points here that'll lock in. I find that I do a lot better using a uh, rubber mallet to lock them all back into place. And then it's as simple as wrapping that back on the back there. And I changed mine out for a metal studded uh, sole. So this has 16 studs and it gives me absolutely stellar performance on slick ice and then it's got these traction bars which give me great traction on snow. So far far more superior uh, traction on these uh, on ice than my mucks. Now in deep snow they're pretty comparable. I haven't noticed a big difference um, in terms of traction. Now let's talk about the inside of the boots uh, in terms of comfort. Now one of the challenges I've always had with my mucks is that I've had plenty of room in the toe box for wearing you know a, a sock liner and a, and a big wool sock and having space in there. It's not squeezing down on my foot so much that it gets cold. Uh, but I get a lot of movement back here on the heel. And if I'm walking long distances, or even doing chores in these, um, like shoveling the driveway or going for a walk down the street, uh, I'll get a lot of heel rub. And uh, I tend to get blisters on my heels, no matter what I did. Uh, if I wore more socks to sort of offset that and lock my heel in a little bit more, then I got way too much compression around my foot and toes and those got colder. With the corkers, unfortunately, I'm having basically the same issue, although it's a little bit better, um, I'll say, on the heel, but I'm still getting the blisters and wear. They are a little more natural and easy to walk in, and I think that's just because of the height difference, um, so my ankles can rotate a little bit easier. Uh, they both have soft liners on the inside and cushioned liners. Uh, the muck is said to have antimicrobial properties added to it, but... It's not like my feet are sweating a lot. If they were sweating a lot, that would be a problem because they'd be getting cold. I'm not having a lot of sweat issues in them. But overall, I would say it's more comfortable to move around in and walk in the Corker's Polar Vortex. Now, I've had these 
for a full ice season and the start of this ice season. And, you know, I saw a lot of hard ice early this year, and now we're seeing some slush. And last year I got these uh, basically right at the start of slush season. And, uh, you know, they're very comfortable to walk in compared to the mucks. I really prefer walking in my polar vortex. I think a big part of that too just might be weight. So uh, these, like I said, are size nines. The mucks um, are basically 2.3 pounds, almost two and a half pounds per boot. And it's closer to just two pounds for the corkers. So a little bit easier to walk in um, than these ones here. Now let's talk about in terms of comfort, not just walking, but in terms of heat and warmth. And I will say hands down, the corkers smash the, the mucks here. That's 600 grams of Thinsulate in here just keeps my feet absolutely toasty, uh, especially when I am just sitting for long periods of time on the bucket, waiting for fish to come by, staring at my sonar. Even if I'm sitting in slush, these keep me far warmer than these mucks. I wouldn't say that my feet got frigidly cold in my muck boots. They were they were good enough, but I didn't realize how uh, cold my feet were getting until I started wearing these corkers, and I would, would just feel like I had no discomfort whatsoever in my feet when wearing the corkers. And this is, like I said, with the 600 gram insulation. And like I said, you can get twice as much insulation on the 1200s than these ones for just 10 bucks more. So these are 225, 230, you can spend 240 and get twice the insulation. That being said, I did have to spend the extra 60 bucks on a separate uh, new set of soles. I wish they sold these boots and let you pick the sole that you want with them, but they only come with that standard sort of all purpose sole but I like these metal studded ones quite a bit. Uh, another thing that's nice about the corkers versus the mucks is that um, the muck is a slip on style boot. And because of that, it's a little bit of a challenge to get on and off, especially if your hands are cold. Um, a lot of times I was using uh, another boot to sort of push this boot off or using my foot to extract my foot out of this boot. It's, you know, a little bit easier to get on, really hard to get off. And because of that, I was pushing backwards on these boots a lot. And what happened on these boots here, this is on my left boot, uh, is all, all that pushing um, where the heavier rubberized part meets the thinner rubberized part. It started to crinkle there and now it's fully cracked. So I can probably patch these or glue these up or tape them and get another season out of them but um, I got big cracks right there in my in my muck boots and I started to tear up that back of the heel here quite a bit um, just because I was pushing the boot on and off whereas with the corkers they use the BOA system uh, which is a cable locking system that tensions down and so it's very, very, very simple to and easy to get your foot in and out of these boots because once you release that cable locking system, it really opens up dramatically and allows your foot to slide in and out really easily. Plus they put some really heavy duty leather reinforcement on the heel here. And you got a nice finger loop too. If you've never used the BOA system, it's really nice. You just turn it. You can do this with your gloves on, which is really nice. And you can crank that cable lock down to your foot. And then when you want to release, you just pull outward like on a button right there. And then that allows you to reopen the boot back up. Now, I've used BOA systems on many uh, of different boots and technical gear that I have. I have BOA systems on my wading shoes. I have BOA systems on my running shoes and uh, all of them slip just a little bit throughout the day. So periodically you have to go back down and just retighten them a couple clicks. It's not um, a you know, big deal, but it is something to be wary of. I've never had them loosen up so much that I felt like the boot was gonna fall off, but I would notice they would start to loosen up just a little bit throughout the day.
So overall, I've been really happy with both of these uh, boots and, and my investment in them. It's no small investment to spend 250 bucks on a set of, of specialized winter boots, but then again, cold, wet feet can really ruin your experience out on the ice. Uh, these mucks gave me a little over three seasons before they failed, which considering that I used uh, my winter ice fishing boots for a variety of other tasks, including chores around the house and shoveling the driveway and checking on livestock, uh, they get their fair amount of use. Uh, I, I think three seasons, three or four seasons out of them is fairly decent. Overall, I would say that uh, I still find myself reaching for the muck boots, especially in extreme slushy conditions, just because of concerns about snow getting up into my uh, corkers. This is especially true uh, when I'm doing non-ice fishing things, like around the house and the snow is deep in the backyard, and I don't want to throw on a pair of bibs or something. Um, if I'm just going to wear a pair of pants out and my in my boots, then I'm way more likely to get snow on the inside of these corkers. They're really designed to be worn with snow pants or bibs or something to protect uh, snow and slush from getting inside there. Uh, but that being said, in slick ice conditions, the corkers hands down win, and they also help keep my feet substantially warmer. I can't speak to their durability yet because I've only used them for a little over a year, but in terms of wear, uh, they look like they're holding up extremely well. They look almost brand new. Um, for as much as I've used them, they stay pretty clean, um, mostly because I just use them primarily on ice and snow, uh, not in muddy, dirty situations. Uh, and these ones have also held up really well. Just the only weakness is where that thicker material where they reinforce the heel meets the thinner material, which is a common problem on lots of my technical gear. Anytime you have two uh, materials coming together that have different tensile strength or uh, flexibility, you're gonna get uh, some rub or crinkling of material and that's gonna cause those failures. Um, so that's been the only, my only complaint with the MUX is, is that failure there. Either way, uh, like I said, it'll depend on what type of ice fishing conditions that you face the most and what you're looking to get out of your winter boot, uh, both on and off the ice. Uh, but before I let you guys go, I wanted to talk about another boot, the boot that I wish I would have got, or at least I really want to try, and that is the boot that came out this year from Corkers, and that is their men's Neo Arctic boot, which looks like a muck boot. Although it's a little bit higher, it's 16 inches in height rather than 13. Uh, so a little bit taller boot. But like all of the Corker's boots, it has that replaceable sole. Now, again, they're not including metal cleats as a standard option in that. So that boot's $200 plus the 60 bucks for the replacement cleats. It's 260 so it's a little bit more than uh, what uh, you would spend on just a muck boot. But having that ability to change out the soles on that boot are really interesting. And like the muck boot, it's a neoprene boot, but instead of using five millimeters of neoprene like the muck boot does, they use eight millimeter and they rate it to negative 60. So it's a warm boot with an interchangeable sole. And one of the things that they say in the description is this heel issue, this heel wear, heel rub on the inside. Uh, they've put a... Uh, reinforcement inside there to create more tension on the back of your heel so you get less heel rub. And if that's true, then they've addressed a lot of my complaints about uh, my ice fishing boots uh, by providing a warm, tall boot with a replaceable sole that I can customize to whatever conditions I need and they've cured that heel issue. So I'll put links to both the Polar Vortex boots, the 600 gram and 1200 gram, as well as the Muck Arctic Ice boot down below. And I'll put links to that new Corkers Neo Arctic boot. Um, like I said, I haven't tried that boot, but I find it very, very interesting and I really want to try it at some point. All right, guys, if you have any questions, just let me know and get, I'll get back to you in the comments section. And if you do decide to buy one of these boots, please do so through the link below because it really helps out this channel. All right, I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.